Oh, Frankie, I'm loving that. That's actually spring temperatures coming soon, okay? I enjoy that. Speaking of, there yeah. have never been more people, Frankie, gardening and growing vegetables than we know during this pandemic, which is a good thing. So from bugs to slugs to weeds and trees, when to harvest our very own with Frankie Flowers. He's got us covered. First up, Frankie, it's June. So does that mean we can plant something now and we can still reap the fruit or veg come harvest time? Oh, 100%. So okay. you can just see that if you take a look, it was just only a few days ago oh. that I, I put in another line of some radishes. So I've already done my first crop of radishes. And now what I need to do is after I've already seeded this line is just to start to thin some of those out. We could take those radish tops as well. Mm. And you mm. can add them to a salad. They're fantastic for that. So you can do radishes. I've already just uh, last week did a little, another line of some spinach that's in there. Uh, we could even do some lettuce greens. And Dina, I want to give people a big tip. Uh, these troughs that I grow in, yeah. absolutely love these troughs. And the reason, do you know why I grow in these troughs? Because things can't get to it easily? No. You got it. Oh. I have such a bunny problem here. When they say busy like a bunny, bunnies breed like friggin' crazy. And around this area, there are so many bunnies that are out there that when it comes to my lettuce greens, my romaine, my leaf lettuce, if I was to have these at ground level, man, they would be devoured. Same with my kale that's here. I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, Swiss chard. Do you like Swiss chard? I love Swiss chard. And uh, you're right about the bunnies. Bad bunnies, not just the musician. So that keeps them from reaching it, you're saying, yeah. right? Otherwise, it would be a buffet. It would be a buffet, but also I want to mention to people right now with Swiss chard, you may be seeing, and I left one of the leaves behind, you may be seeing the leaves of your Swiss chard doing this, and that is indeed a leaf miner. And as you can see, what I did was just kind of prune all those older leaves that are infected off, and now I got the new flush of leaves. That's what I love about Swiss chard, is they will always push up. My buck choy mm. is almost ready to harvest. So you can see once the buck choy is starting to have that size that you would see in the grocery store, you're going to cut that down. With the kale, kale you're not going to harvest by cutting it down. With kale, what we're going to do is always prune off those side leaves. We can add that to a salad beautifully, but you could go over here and grab some of your leaf lettuce and then some of your red leaf and then some of your green leaf and all of a sudden you start to mix those together. Oh, so many nutrients. Look at that freshness. Yes, oh. and organic and in oh. your backyard. It's a win, win, win. Now the tomato plants, you mentioned Frankie that they sold out like mm. crazy. So if you did get your hands on them, what do you do at this point? Mm -hmm. You eat, so finish So tomato that. plants, <laughs> I finish my, yeah. Here's my tomato plant. So I got my cage on. My cage is for support. You need to put them on while they're a little bit early. You can see that's a younger variety that's right there. Um, what you're going to start to do is start to take off the bottom stems, yeah. just like this. And the reason why we're taking off some of those bottom stems is because you really want to get more airflow and more air circulation around. They're not really yet to be suckered at this time, but we're going to remove those bottom stems. And with this, I'm just going to put that to the good old compost pile. Now, hmm. Still eat my kale. Um, this <laughs> is really important. It's tough. Do you know what? Do you know what this is? What is that? What is that? A weed? That's Come a weed. On. Oregano. It's basil. Oh, basil. basil. You got to get rid of those middle things, right, Frank? Or else it goes um, bitter. You well, if you leave the flower heads that are here, you can see I've already pruned one off over there, and this is what we should be doing. Even if you don't need the basil at that time, you should always be moving the seed heads and or flower heads off. It's going to put more vibrancy to the basil plant itself. It's going to flush out new growth mm -hmm. and you're going to continue to be able to harvest all season long. So even if you don't need the basil at this time, always, whenever you see these things starting to form there, it's just starting to form. You always just want to go over there and just give that a little bit of a pinch off. And that's as simple as it is. You're just pinching those off and everywhere I pinch there, yeah. I'm just going to move that a little bit better. Everywhere I pinch there is going to stem new growth and we'll get bigger, bushier plants and we'll have loads of basil all season long. So Another tip too, if you're wondering why the basil is put around this garden, bunnies hate basil and oh. bunnies will stay away from basil. I always kind of designed the garden like this so that it would stay away. I've been trying to keep them, I put the parsley way back here. But you can see the parsley has been getting eaten in the back a little oh, bit. Yeah. But just another reminder, if you want to have a good garden, you always want to be fertilizing. You can use a water soluble like a miracle Grow at this time or a shake and feed. And take the time to get out there and take a look for any insects. Coming up in the next few weeks, you're going to start to see tomato hornworm on these guys. Got to keep an eye on that as well. And really with the heat, the humidity, it's fantastic overall because things have really started to grow. Can you overwater your veggies? Oh, 
Mm, I love the smell of fresh basil too, Frank. It's best, so good. You know, I like the, the a great yeah, a great tip by the way too. Can you overwater your uh, yeah. veggies? We always want to water in the morning. And on a rainy day, we don't necessarily need to water. It's already rained today, so we don't yeah. need to water. That's an efficient use of water. Morning watering, the reason why we're morning watering is if we didn't and we only watered at night and our gardens went to bed wet at night, what would happen is we get a lot of crawling insects like slugs. Yeah. So in order to prevent slugs, we want to water in the mornings. If you have slugs, you can use slug begone. And as well, what you can do is put crushed eggshells around the base of your plants to prevent crawling insects from getting onto your plants overall. So remember, water in the morning, always key. Uh, fertilize is key. And then harvest on time, especially with your herbs. If you want that new flush of herbs, always harvest. With your tomato plants, if you look at the spacing that we have here, when this tomato plant finishes, it's going to be about this high and it'll be about this oh, wide. Beautiful. So I've harvested the radishes out of the way. The tomato takes the space in and then boom, I'm using this small square footage and I'm getting tons and tons of veg. Totally. For my family. You got your basil right there, perfectly parked next to the tomatoes. You can make a nice pesto. Forget the past. Frankie Flowers has all your solutions at Frank Ferragini for more. There he goes. Hey, we'll be back with more BT right after this.